Hi, uh, my name's Dave, and this video is a visual summary of me installing my Thinkware F770 dash cam into my 2019 BMW X5 G05 variant. I previously installed this camera setup into my 2015 X5, but this car, this one here, threw up some different issues. Before running the video, I thought it'd be useful to cover some issues not covered in the vid that might help you before starting to tackle the job. These are in no particular order. Fundamentally, there are three fuse boxes. One's located under a side panel in the boot area of the driver's side on the right hand of the drive car. Uh, the cover may or may not have a securing latch. Mine doesn't, but some do apparently. If you don't have a catch, then merely insert a flat bladed screwdriver into the top edge and gently lever it off. It just pops back in without any effort. Inside this box, you should find a small folded card with a layer of the fuses in the car front and rear. The other two fuse boxes are in the front right hand side and left hand side footwells. The front right hand side is in the driver side footwell behind the outboard trim panel. Details of how to access this and indeed many other components behind panels can be found in the new TIS info website. Just Google lowercase new T and then TIS dot info and then select the model of your car. This is an invaluable resource. In my innocence, because the diagram on the TIS site did not show details of the bonnet, stroke hood, release catch, uh, I thought that the box I was looking for was on the left hand side, but I was wrong. And the right hand side fuse box is indeed in the right hand side footwell. In the video, you will see that having failed to identify the left hand side fuse box, I was going to extend the power leads on my camera to run them from the rear box. As it turned out, I decided to find the right hand side fuse box. Uh, and the way to access this is virtually the same as the left hand side, which is why I left the left hand side access video elements in. I use fuse taps to piggyback on fuseways in the front right hand side fuse box. And because of the physical size of the fuse taps, I was unable to fit the taps anywhere other than at the end of the rows of the fuseways I had selected. The end of the rows provided greater space to accommodate the, uh, the larger um, physical dimensions of the tap. This may be clearer when you watch the video. A point to note is that when seeking out an ignition controlled supply, these circuits tend to remain powered up for some time after the ignition is switched off. In my experience, about 10 minutes. I use fuse location 61 for the ignition control supply and fuseway 38 for the permanent supply. Although in my car this fuseway was not populated, but I guess this will depend on what options or model you have. Because the Thinkware F770 has an onboard battery conditioning cutoff setting to protect the car's battery from discharging too far, I didn't need any other power supply monitoring device. But if your camera doesn't have this capability, you may want to consider something like the PowerMagic Pro or other low voltage protection device to wire into the control uh, into the fuse box and then use to power up your camera. To finish, I'd just like to apologise for the quality of the video. This is my very first public video, but I thought it was worth sharing my experience with others, even if the quality was not very professional. Because as my family and friends will testify, my favourite saying is, the answer is always on the internet, but in this instance, I couldn't find this kind of detail covering the latest X5 model anywhere. Finally, if you found this video useful, then please hit the like button. This is not for any reasons of self-gratification, but if people can see that it has been liked by others, then they may be more inclined to view it and gain confidence in the content. Well, that's it. So here's the video and good luck. Right, this is the first stage. Um, this is the left hand um, footwell cover because this is a right hand drive car. Uh, I've just rotated the lock pins, which is this one and this one, and dropped it down. And I'm just about now to disconnect the connector for the interior light. Right, I've just disconnected the uh, footwell light connector. These are the two toggles that I've previously released and the whole thing's come out now and has been disconnected. 
what we've got up inside here now. Right, I've used various pry tools to remove this uh, trim here. These are the sort of fittings you get. Uh, this goes into there. Hang on, I'll use this better. Right, this one just pops into there. These you've got to push, pop out. There's several of these, they just fit directly into these holes here. And now it's going to be removing this in order to remove that panel there. Right, I've just used a T25 to remove that from an expanding rivet. That's the bit there that actually expands into that hole there. Got it out. And now hopefully there should be something up here that I can remove to get this side panel off. <laughs> right, having taken all that lot off on the left hand side, hoping to find a fuse front fuse panel. Uh, I couldn't find it. So I've decided to take option B, which is going to be run the rear view camera from a, up there and then run the power lead across the top here above the mirror in that recess around the top down there and I'm going to extend the power leads lengths here and run them back to the rear view uh, not rear view to the rear fuse panel so that's plan B see how we get on Oh, right, <laughs> looks like I've kept that on. Right, coming from the centre pillar there, around the rear seats, that was an absolute doddle, just running it round there, underneath the seal. I've come out, oh, it's a bit, not so good here, is it? Um, hang on, let's see if I can get up here a bit closer. Yeah, that's a bit better. Uh, right, I've come up there, round there, that was dead easy. <laughs> And the intention is to run it above. Wait a minute. Uh, the roof lining interface around there. And that's uh, going to bring me out towards the tailgate, God willing. Right, well, here's where it all starts to go horribly wrong. I've managed to get from all the way from the front all the way down to here. And now I needed, I was hoping to be able to get from here and then be able to meet up with, go through there and meet up and come out inside here like I did on my previous X5 so I could put the cable in through this trunk in, come out and then come up on there, run it along inside there and stick the camera there. Unfortunately, on this X5, there is a box section. Inside there is a box section, and there's no way of getting from this bit into that bit. Not without removing all the headlining, nothing I can see to do that. So at the moment, I'm stuck. So I'm going to leave it there, tidy it up, dangle it, while I try and get the front one fixed. I'm going to put this back. But a bit of a shame there. Right, this is me locating the front right fuse box on a G05 2019 X5 and it's right here <laughs> and it's been a bit of a pain to get at 
Now all I need to do is find the right fuses. One switched in, uh, ignition switched and one permanently on. All right, here's where I've connected my fuses, or my spare fuseways, piggybacks, or whatever they call them. Uh, I had a job to get them in because the physical orientation of the uh, the actual connectors. The one nearest on the right hand side of your view in this was the uh, permanent live and that was in a spare way and the one furthest away as you view in this is uh, an ignition controlled uh, connection and the two I've uh, identified from my fuse card, they were 38 and 61. Right, well that's that. They're individually fused down here. And I've run the cable up the side of there. All the way up. I've come across at the top of a pillar. Excuse me while I move. I've come round there. The only trouble was I had a tight bend just on there and I didn't want to pull the headline in away any further, but that's quite neat. And as I can't see it when I'm driving, it isn't going to get on my nerves. The rest of it's all tucked away up there. Uh, behind, I'm going to tidy that up a little bit, push that in a bit further, but again, I can't see it from where I am. And there's the camera over there. Right, stop me now before I break me back. Right, well, that's where I've uh, installed the camera. I've had to bring it down a bit because of the, uh, I don't know, those shadow dots that are on the screen. And I had to move it away from the mirror here because my mounting bracket unlocks when I move it to the when I can take it away like this but it needs I, I made a cock up to start with I'll put it hard up against the mirror and then realized that I'd not be able to get it off so uh, using a bit of dental floss I went behind there and managed to uh, take the old 3m tape off and this is booming good stuff, I must admit, this 3M's, uh, we can see that, right? Got that off uh, eBay. Anyway, it sticks like the proverbial to a blanket. Uh, uh, but dental floss, going back and made with a saw in action, gets it off. So, so far, uh, the front camera and the actual, or no, the front camera and the uh, power supplies and that all seem to be not too bad. But I'm really going to struggle with that rear camera, I know I am. Okay, for this bit. for this bit. All right, well, flush with success, it's fixing the front camera. I've uh, decided to have another go at trying to find a way to fit the rear view camera, and I think I've got a way ahead. What I've done is popped this panel here, the one that's got the speaker grill in it, and there it is. Uh, there's my camera lead coming over the top and see this little hole here this one well if I poke a wire coat hanger up through there it comes out at that there look so, just so you can see what I'm doing, I think. You see both ends? Oh yeah, there we go. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. So, what I intend to do is because this is not used for anything, because the cap goes in there, that, go, that goes in there, I'm gonna enlarge this hole just sufficiently wide enough 
to take the inlet to my camera, which is currently powered up. It'll be taking a lovely image of me. So I'll just disconnect it. So it only needs to be wide enough for that to go in through there. And then I will poke it back out through that and then run it up the way, all the way up here, and then stick it to the window. Well, that's the plan. All right, well, there's my uh, lead going up through an elongated hole that I just marginally made bigger, making sure I didn't let any of the oil in, uh, oil filings drop down onto the speaker below. Uh, it's come out there, and the idea now is to run it up through this grommet up through there and then it will pop out down behind this panel which you can't really see because my hands are like right okay well down in there and that is for those that can't see it at the moment coming out of there and up behind this panel which has just popped off the top and then out of there and stick on stupid mistake to avoid don't run it on the outside of here because it's wrong it needed to go that side so start again still uh, decided to put a bit of string on the end of that before I pull it through and then uh, That'll make it easier to wind it back through the right way, avoiding that pillar. Right, well there's the finished thing. It's coming out of there, up through the trunking, in there, then behind the panel. All the gas is tucked away nice and tidily in there. And there's my rear view camera stuck to the window. Well. I hope this is of use to anybody who wants to try this this job. Good luck.